presiding arbitrator, the umpire for this three-member arbitration panel, Shirin, was only uh, nominated last week. So we haven't even seen the first hearing of this. But this is significant. Kane Energy now becomes the first company to sue the government to seek damages as far as this, this controversial retrospective tax goes. Uh, it was in March 2015 that Kane Energy actually received a draft assessment notice from the income tax department for $1.6 billion plus penalty plus interest. Uh, so that is why it is, see it is seeking this $1 billion, saying that its 9.8% shareholding was locked into Kane India. It was barred from selling that. And since it wasn't allowed to exit Kane India, uh, it has lost its value. It has had to sell other assets around the world. It's had to delay other exploration programs as well. It's going to be interesting to see if Vedanta is also going to seek damages from the government or not. It has said in the past it will also consider damages. Uh, the other thing that we have to watch out for is the UK-India treaty. Simon Thompson, the CEO of Kane Energy PLC, quite convinced that Kane Energy has a very strong case. This is a government, the new government, the NDA government, Arun Jaitley has said he's not going to you know, issue new tax notices. But is the, uh, is the investor community convinced or not? Well, it doesn't seem like that. Uh, to talk more about this, we're now joined by senior advocate Porus Kaka. Porus, appreciate you joining us here on India Business Hour. A quick comment from you uh, on the developments as far as Kane Energy is concerned, now suing the government for damages worth a billion dollars. Yes, well, it's entitled to, I think, there is the bilateral investment treaty, and that provides for arbitration. So Kane is looking into its rights out there. As far as the government goes, I think uh, Mr. Jeffrey from the beginning has put what he calls these legacy issues in one basket. And on the retrospective, he's made it very clear that the present government will introduce no fresh retrospective legislation. But to deal with the ghost of the past, Porus, uh, and you know, we've been speaking with the Ishwar panel and the Justice Ishwar panel, we're given to understand, will only look at addressing the controversial Section 9 changes in the second set of their recommendations. They've submitted their first set of recommendations, but a member of the Ishwar panel telling us that Section 9 related issues will be dealt with in the second set, which could take another two, two and a half months for the recommendations to be prepared. So it's unlikely that we could see any relief on this front anytime soon. That's absolutely correct, Shirin, and that's really the correct way to go about it. And I don't even know where the retrospective issues are within the remit, uh, but anyway, if they look at it, nothing like it. But Section 9 has already been dealt with. I mean, we have a unique situation where going forward, the legislation has been cleaned up in the last budget, but all those caught between 2012 to 20, 20, 2015 have not only the retrospective amendment but a very poorly drafted law so i think at some stage we will have to look at that basket but currently i think the government has said we've you know either appointed a panel or we're going to leave it as a separate legacy issue to be dealt with with the courts it's not a very happy situation but i think the government has decided that this is a legacy issue which they can't sort of just legislate on the retrospective amendment itself and arbitration proceedings now underway in this specific matter. But Porus, before I let you go, what does this now mean in terms of investor sentiment? I mean, you've already got a fairly glo gloomy global outlook. The government is talking about trying to draw in investments and big ticket investments into India. It's ironic that the finance minister is in London today meeting his counterpart as uh, we hear this announcement coming in from Kane Energy. What is it going to mean in terms of big ticket investments? Well, you know, if you look at the big ticket issues, I think, for example, the FIR and the MAT issue was probably more big ticket than this. The reason is, Ken is an individual issue and it is a specific legacy issue. On FIR and MAT, the government not only introduced a process, they followed it up, they were quite, you know, <clears throat> prompt. So I think they've done well. Now, this is an unpleasant situation. What to do with the past? The investing community would love a retrospective on a retrospective. But I think just removing the tax, the government okay. does have its problems. In fact, if you remember, the BJP itself was a part of the, uh, the uh, parliament that passed the 2012 Act. So I think right. they are in a difficult position. And the investing community, I think, has to a certain extent that, look, this will be dealt with perhaps through the courts or through the Ishwar panel or something else, but it's not going to be simply legislated upon and given up. 
All right, Boris Kaka, as always, appreciate you joining us here on CNBC TV 18 to give us your comments on the developments of the day. That's Kane Energy seeking a billion dollars in damages from the government. From Kane Energy to Kane India, the Delhi High Court has set a two-week deadline for the government to firm up its views on allowing Kane India to export crude from its Rajasthan block. Now, the court has gone on to observe that forcing Kane India to sell crude in the domestic market at a lower price is actually hurting the government's own profit share, which exploration major Kane India argues could go up by as much as 1400 crore rupees if it was allowed to export the crude. Ashmit, who was in court, joins us now with the details. Ashmit, we're talking big numbers here. Uh, the court has given the government two weeks to come up with a response. Indeed, uh, that's the time and this has been termed as the last and the final opportunity for the government to come out with its final position as far as exports is concerned. Now, as you, of course, pointed out, Kane led with that argument, questioning whether is the government losing out foregoing royalties worth 1,400 crore rupees by disallowing Kane from exporting crude from its Rajasthan fields. That's the sum and substance of their arguments. What they're essentially arguing before the High Court is that the production sharing contract provides for a certain portion of the oil recovered to be sold to government and, and, and to PSUs. What their argument essentially is that the government has not been picking up its share and that that, that balance component is being forced. Kane is being forced to sell that balance component to local refiners. And this sale is being done to local refiners, to domestic refiners, at a significant discount to international prices. And that's their contention here, that even if the sale is being made to domestic refiners, why not at international prices? Towards that end, they also argued that they've written to the DGFT. They've also written uh, to various government agencies to ensure that this export process is fastened, is hastened. But as of now, no, they, they have been met with dead silence. That's Kane's contention here. Now, in response to this, the Delhi High Court questioned uh, the government. The government, as of now, has clarified that they have, seeking, they have been seeking the opinion of the law ministry and they're waiting clarity on that. But meanwhile, the prima facie view that the government has taken is that there is no room for export of crudes as per the production sharing contract. That's the government position as of now. Now, this was met with a lot of criticism. Uh, it was reprimanded by the Delhi High Court. The High Court held that prima facie, it appears that the loss is causing, a, uh, that this sale to domestic refiners is causing a loss to the government. The High Court also reasoned that if the sale is being made to domestic refiners, why provide that arbitrage of acquiring crude at lower than international prices and then being allowed to export uh, the refined oil at international prices? So clearly, uh, tough questions being raised here. As of now, the Delhi High Court, as we had uh, said initially, has given a last and final opportunity uh, to the government. In two weeks' time, they will have to come out and clarify their position. So February 4th will be the big day. That's when the onus will be on the government to clarify and, on, and crystallize its position on export of crude. Back to you. So the next hearing, we'll know what the, what the Petroleum Ministry has to say. We did have Kane India Management on the channel saying it's unfair the company has to sell its crude at a 25% discount to Brent. Thanks, Arashmith, for joining us with that.